the time. Just because they don't make a move don't mean that Travis not on the phone. Travis is going to do his due diligence. He's going to make them phone calls and he's going to make the best. You know, he's going to do the, what he thinks is best. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm a Travis guy. Like some people are kind of hard on Travis. I think in the totality of uh, of his moves since he's been here, he's got more right than he's gotten wrong. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't I don't bang, I bang Travis at times. I like that he's forthcoming and he's like, look, man, I messed up. I like mm-hmm. I like a GM that can admit like, hey, that move wasn't that best. Travis is very open and uh, mm-hmm. he's very good with the media. I love speaking with him. He, he's he's a really delight to talk to. And uh, yeah, I like Travis, man. So I think he's going to do his due diligence. And if if pool is, is ready to make a move and I'm, I'm sure Travis is going to get him on the phone and see what they got available. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see on that front. Um... We'll end on this. So if Quinn Snyder, who obviously was an assistant under Mike Budenholzer, if he was like, he put the feelers out like, hey, uh, I'm interested in coaching Trey and Gobert in Atlanta. So (laughs) if you want to do that, are you certain Nate's the guy long term? Would you have, would you, if you're Schlenker company and you just hear that like Quinn is open to it? Do you think there's enough of an upgrade to make a switch? Did you see enough from La- from Nate last year where you're like, maybe there was something about just the coaching change from Lloyd to Nate that there was this high emotional high that the Hawks ran on uh, for that uh, deep playoff run. And last year was more of an issue. Like the timeout stuff in the playoffs was a problem. And what he did during the regular season, like just not calling timeouts when runs just got out of hand. That was something that uh, a lot of folks did not like. Um, some rotation questions um throughout the year but by and large we know he's a really good coach but i mean i don't know i'm just i'm curious what would you how would you rate nate to this point and do you think that's something that they might explore if quinn uh puts the feelers out there so yeah so you know in in hawks twitter nate is always and and, and it's in every twitter you know every Mm -hmm. you know mavericks twitter you know the coach is always the guy right yeah because no one's gonna no fan is going to most fans aren't going to be like, hey, my player didn't play good or my player mm-hmm. wasn't in the right spot or my player X, Y and Z. The blame is always going to go to the coach 90 percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And I bang Nate on uh, on some things, but I think he's a good coach. Do I think he's the guy that's going to get him to that next level? I'm not sure. I'm just I'm. he's really. But what did you bang him on? What is what is what is what what is frustrating about his coaching for the last year and a half? Um, He's very old and stubborn. Mm-hmm. stubborn as far as like flexibility uh I, I would have liked to see the young kid a little bit more jalen johnson the rookie yeah, just did not uh, play and, and and just to not play him in certain situations i thought was problematic but old coaches are like that old coaches mm-hmm. are very and he and he's from that old school where look man you're not finna play unless you know what i'm saying like you really gonna have to show that you're gonna you know earn this playing time mm-hmm. and so I, I i banged him on that a little bit not so much the x's and o's are 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 really like you know the schematics I, I think at the end of the day he's a good coach but yeah uh let's say i think last year when they made the run it was more so of they just needed a new voice because they didn't mm-hmm. like pierce anymore and sometimes you just make a little adjustment because his coaching style wasn't that different from coach pierce like if you mm-hmm. look at the x's and o's and how they coach how they do rotations it wasn't really that different the guys just liked him better mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um my thing is this if 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 you're ready to get rid of Nate after year one, like kind of year one and a half, and then what? You you bring in another guy, and this is what Trey's third coach. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then like how how many times are we gonna be keep going through the through the through the the, the rotation yeah. until we get a guy? And and before we look at the players on the court, not saying that Trey's the fault or anybody's at the fault, you know. But a lot of times we give these players a pass. And I think the culpability lies on both sides. I think maybe mm-hmm. it's 60, 40, maybe the coach is 60 and the, and the players are 40, but I think the culpability is a little bit more down the middle than we like to admit. Yeah, I would agree. What have you liked though? What do you think is the best trade about Nate running the sidelines? Um, he's experienced. He knows that he, he's not, he's not, he doesn't get too high with the highs, too lows with the lows. Mm-hmm. And that's very valuable. An 82 game stretch, an 82 game season. It's funny because, you know, I always tweet during the Hawks games and mm-hmm. I love to see fans' reactions and how they go up in the first quarter and down in the third. And mm-hmm. then they're back and forth. And then fourth quarter, they're either happy because their team came back or they're very upset because their team blew a lead. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. That's basketball. 16 point, 18 point leads mean absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? Mm. And Nate is very even killed. Like you at, at, in a press conference, you won't be able to tell if the Hawks won by 20 or if they lost by 20. His mm. message is always the same. And I think that's what has made him stick around. You know, he knows the game of basketball and you can't replace his knowledge. You know what I'm saying? He knows the game. He, I mean, he, it's a different game nowadays than when he played, but he knows the game and how it should be played. And so I think that's his most valuable asset just from what he's seen and what he knows, because he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. There you go.